From ancient castles lost to time hidden below the murky depths to mythical creatures that feast on children's essence, there are more dangers and mysteries hiding under the cover of water. Many of these curiosities are better left resting, but can now be viewed safely here. Take a look, if you dare, at 20 shocking things recently discovered in ponds. Three thousand year old ruin. Uncovered secrets lurked beneath the murky depths of Lake Van. For more than a decade, one diver had explored its icy waters, unearthing relics of the region's mysterious past. But on a routine survey in 2016, he spotted something astonishing on the lake bed massive stone walls emerging from the silt. Over countless dives, his small team slowly mapped the full extent of the completely submerged ruins, walls stretching underwater for nearly a kilometer. Though they lacked archaeological expertise, one clue stood out among the stones, a carved lion symbolizing the ancient Eurasian kingdom. Baffled by the underwater castle, he shared his photos with experts. Archaeologists believe parts dated as far back as medieval times, noting an earlier report of a site in the area. However, later builders could have reused some materials from earlier discoveries lying dormant below the surface. More investigation is needed to unravel the full story hidden in the depths. A proper excavation could unravel when each piece was constructed. For now, his chance discovery had cracked open a window into glimpses of humanity's distant presence in this place. Further explorations promise to lift more veils on the castle lying in Lake Van's cold, still waters. Now let's get ready for today's missing topic. What scientists have found in this pond have left people speechless? Pictured, you'll see the devil-horned ape discovered in marshes and tropical forests of the Democratic Republic of the Congo. Historically, people had not traveled this deep into this territory as it's been war-torn and uninhabitable. Imagine being the first scientist to happen upon such a frightening ape. He must have thought that he had run into a demon from hell. Upon further investigation, however, it appears to be just like any ordinary primate, except with a much more frightening face. Why and how these beasts developed to be so frightening is still a mystery that the scientists will now happily study. Now we want to hear from you. While the name Devil Horned Ape might seem cool enough, it's not the final name for this newly discovered creature. Sound off in the comments below and suggest a name for this scary guy. Who knows, maybe scientists will make that the official name when they see it. Don't forget to mark your comment to be seen with hashtag missing topic. Radioactive fish. Deep within the toxic waters of the Chernobyl exclusion zone lurks an unsettling threat. Gigantic catfish growing to human sizes. In the cooling pond left behind when the reactor was shut down, beasts over two meters long prowl the irradiated depths. Nearby lakes within the zone also harbor mutant fish populations. Early studies found the catfish in the cooling pond exhibiting warped chromosomes and damaged genomes in proportion to absorbed radiation levels. This suggested decades of exposure to lingering isotopes from the 1986 disaster were taking a genetic toll. However, later analysis found no clear link between radiation dose levels and deformities raising new questions about the catfish's resilience to radiation. Only more mysteries emerged. There, researchers discovered strange changes to the reproductive anatomy of fish, organs subtly altered from normal counterparts elsewhere in unnatural ways. The abnormalities extended beyond internal organs, with some fish also exhibiting unusual scales and deformities in jaw structure. While not definitive proof, this abnormal development hinted radiation may be insidiously rewriting life across generations within Chernobyl. As the colossal catfish have continued to thrive in their domain of decaying infrastructure and radioactivity, scientists have more questions about long-term impacts on the area's wildlife. With radiation levels still high in some areas, it remains unclear if deformities may become more severe over time or if populations will achieve a new radiation-tolerant normal. Further, long-term study is needed to unravel the unpredictable biological consequences still unfolding in the abandoned region. Brain-like blob, Mark was taking a walk around his pond when something new shocked him. Where once clear water rippled beneath trees, bizarre gelatinous blobs now obscured the surface. Pink and tan masses over two feet wide had seemingly appeared overnight, completely covering the water's surface. Alarmed by the possibility of an invasive species destroying the local ecosystem, 
Mark urgently contacted the local conservation department for assistance. Upon closer inspection, they recognized signs of the magnificent bryozoan, though they had never seen these filter-feeding organisms dominating an entire body of water to such an extreme extent. Consultations with other experts deepened Sam's concern but provided no reassurance. He worried that if not contained, the dense blooms could easily spread to other nearby waterways. The overnight transformation of the pond was shocking and left many questions about how the bryozoans could have established such a complete dominance in such a short period of time. Determined to fill critical knowledge gaps, Sam began carefully documenting the unprecedented bryozoan population himself. Up close, observations revealed the gelatinous masses teemed with filter feeders. While the situation seemed potentially disastrous, Sam advised against attempts to remove the blooms without first gaining a proper understanding of the bryozoans' typical ecology. Sam was left still wondering if he had merely witnessed a strange natural occurrence of the early signs of an ecological disruption. Only further long-term study would reveal the true nature and impacts of the bryozoan takeover of the pond. Coffin on the course Construction workers renovating the golf course pond in Titney, England made an unexpected discovery. While digging in the gravel, one noticed a large log protruding from the mud. Upon closer inspection, they realized it was no ordinary tree trunk. It was a perfectly formed ancient coffin. Archaeologists from the University of Sheffield sprang into action when they heard about the coffin. They knew this delicate wooden box needed careful handling to be preserved. Carefully excavating the heavy sarcophagus, they found human bones still inside after 4,000 years. Among the remains was an amazing artifact, a polished stone axe head, its wooden handle surprisingly intact even after all that time. Sifting through the surrounding soil, the archaeologists also discovered plant materials like moss and leaves that had been used as bedding. This indicated the person had been buried in late spring. But who was the individual from the Bronze Age, and how did they end up buried here at the golf course? Back at their lab, the archaeologists set out to solve these mysterious things through analysis of the coffin and its contents. Carbon dating provided clues about when this person lived during periods of coastal flooding long ago. After years of study, the team learned more about this person's life and unusual gravesite. Their discovery ended up shedding light on burial practices from over 4,000 years in the past and how the landscape had changed since then. Though many questions remained, the rare artifacts and coffin offered glimpses into this ancient burial place. Giant Salamander Cold waters rushed over the rocky steam bed beneath the surface of the mountain river. In the murky depths, a giant six-foot Japanese salamander lay in wait among the shadows of overhanging boulders. Its massive form blended perfectly with the stony river bottom, camouflaged from potential prey above. Through skin lined with sensory pores, the ambush predator could detect the slightest vibrations in the currents. It remained perfectly still for hours, conserving energy until the right moment. When an unsuspecting fish strayed too close, a claw-like limb lashed out with a shocking speed. Rows of tiny, sharp teeth ensured there was no escape from its crushing jaws. As afternoon light filtering through the water began to dim, the giant salamander stirred from its hiding place. Wavering subtly back and forth through the silt-filled waters, it searched for signs of encroaching rivals. Its bulky silhouette cast only the faintest shadow thanks to reflective skin and life spent concealed from view. Come sunrise, the giant salamander vanished once more beneath brush and undercuts along the banks. There it would lie in wait as the currents washed over its still form throughout another day, an unseen ghost that only moved under a shroud of darkness. Few who walked the steam bed above ever knew of the giant sentinel lurking so near, yet completely hidden from sight below the rushing surface. Selfie Spot The small village of Pankok in central Java was facing hard times. With high unemployment, residents barely scraped by from farming and quarry work. The community's one landmark, the pond, had fallen into such a state of disrepair that villagers used it as their personal laundry bin. A newly elected village head saw an opportunity. He consulted students who identified the pond's pristine springs as its greatest asset. If restored, he swiftly devised a plan to rehabilitate the village eyesore and convert it into a cash cow. Though skeptical, 430 of 700 families contributed funds. 
cleanup began on the garbage-filled pond, which was such a task that volunteers worked day and night for weeks to clear a decade's worth of debris. As the springs cleared, they revealed the pond's crystal beauty hidden beneath the muck. He installed props on the bottom to attract photographers, envisioning artful designs that would wow visitors from afar. Influencers flocked to capture the pool's shimmering blue waters and underwater shots posted for millions to see, entranced by its otherworldly allure. The village head Instagrams boomed with visitors swarming in droves on weekends, providing a much-needed jolt to the local economy. Today, tourism sustains the area. Unemployment has vanished, as most people now work to accommodate the hordes of guests. The impoverished village now makes more than enough money to spread around. Giant Sinkhole Farmer Yang woke with the sunrise just as he did every morning. But on this morning, something felt off as he walked toward his fish pond. The cicadas seemed to scream louder than usual as if trying to warn him of the terrible discovery that awaited. As he approached, Yang realized with dread that the water level had drastically lowered overnight. It was as if every fish had sprouted legs and gone for a midnight swim to escape their pond. Rushing to the pond's edge, he found nothing but dry, cracked mud where thousands of fish had been only hours before. Yang searched frantically for an explanation, but there was none to be found. Until he spotted it, a mammoth sinkhole had opened, wide enough to swallow his entire pond and everything inside in one gulp. Nearby, a chicken pecked curiously at the muddy rim, the only witness to the night's bizarre events. Sinkholes are an unfortunate fact of life for some. Yang stared in disbelief, his livelihood and 25 tons of fish vanished without explanation. Later, geologists would determine nearby quarrying had drained the underground streams, collapsing the earth. But for Yang, such details mattered little. His years of work was gone in a single night. Peach Blossom Jellyfish A summer afternoon found Jessica Holman on her usual visit to Shawnee Park. As the Conservancy's marketing director, she made regular rounds to inspect the grounds. As she strolled the walkway circling the pond, movement in the water caught her attention. Upon peering closer, what appeared were strange, gelatinous blobs drifting lazily about. Recognition soon dawned. These were no ordinary blobs, but jellyfish. Jessica stood stunned, for never before had jellyfish been reported in this pond. She drew out her phone and began snapping photos, hoping for insight from colleagues. Within moments, confirmation came from Liz Winlock. These were indeed freshwater jellyfish, an unusual sight so far inland. Intrigued, Jessica spent over an hour by the pond carefully observing the hundreds of jellyfish spread throughout the water. Their transparent forms shimmered mysteriously under the surface. How peculiar that suddenly they should appear, she mused. The discovery demanded to be shared. Jessica hastened back to the Conservancy offices and alerted park officials and local media. All were marveling at the news of the new aquatic inhabitants within the popular urban park. While the way they arrived remains a mystery, the jellyfish have added another element of natural surprise to this oasis beloved by the community. Under Jessica's discovery, what was once a sleepy pond had come alive with an unprecedented bloom. Acid in Pond A mysteriously green pond known as the Devil's Bath was discovered in New Zealand. The indigenous Maori people had known about the geothermal wonders of Waio Tapu region for generations, before European exploration of the area. However, sometime in the late 19th century, Western settlers began exploring deeper parts of the Waio Tapu Thermal Reserve. Guided by local people, together they ventured further into secluded craters and forested regions within the park. One of these expeditions came upon an untouched depression sheltered by dense foliage. Stepping within, they observed the ground still emanating heat from subterranean forces, but the most remarkable sight awaited at the bottom, an intensely hued pool the likes of which none had seen before. Its brilliant emerald coloration and aromatic vapors indicated this was no normal lake or spring. Intrigued by the oddity, word spread of the discovery among settlers and Maori inhabitants. All were mystified by the uniquely vivid tones and properties of what was now named Devil's Bath. Over time, Further visits and study offered clues to how this unusual feature resulted from geologic processes infusing the waters with particular sulfur and mineral elements over thousands of years. Ultimately, Devil's Bath was deemed a noteworthy feature within the larger Waiotapu landscape, becoming part of the park's main attractions. 
Its mysterious green aura is now famous among tourists and lovers of the curious and unusual. Jason Underwater Statue It had been a decade since Doug Klein first placed the menacing statue at the bottom of the abandoned mine pit. As a longtime fan of horror films, he had the idea to craft a life-sized Jason Voorhees figure made of reinforced resin that could withstand the pressures of the deep. On a cold autumn day in 2012, with scuba gear in tow, Doug descended 120 feet down into the murky waters of the Louis Pit to place it. He secured the statue amongst the rubble and settlement, positioning it in a menacing stance with a machete raised. As Doug swam back to the surface, he imagined the fright it would one day give unsuspecting divers. Over the years, divers did occasionally venture down and reported sightings of this strange statue. Its presence became local legend among the close-knit diving community. In 2020, diver Curtis Lahr decided to capture footage of the legendary pit statue on his GoPro. When he shared the unsettling video online, it caught the attention of horror fans nationwide. By then, nearly a decade underwater had taken its toll on the figure. Chipped paint and algae growth made it appear even more worm and ghostly amongst the inky depths, but its intimidating presence does still remain intact and continues frightening new divers at the bottom of the abandoned mine. Shark Sculpture in the summer of 2002, a local diver was exploring the depths of Lake Neuchâtel. As he scanned the lake bottom, moving lazily over the silt and rocks, a large shape in the distance caught his eye. Fitting closer through the murky waters, the diver was puzzled by what appeared to be an immense statue lying on the lake bed. Upon inspection, he realized with surprise that it was an intricately designed statue of a great white shark. Its skin was etched with scales and its jaws were parted to reveal rows of pointing teeth. Intrigued by this unusual discovery, the diver carefully examined the statue before surfacing. He shared word of the find with other local divers. Through further discussion and online research, it was revealed that the statue had been previously used as a prop in a 2002 Swiss film. But the questions remained, why had it been left at the bottom of the lake? Some speculated it was intentionally placed there to intrigue visitors. Over 15 years later, the mysterious shark statue continues to attract curious divers who make the journey to glimpse it for themselves. Though shrouded in an air of mystery, the artificially placed statue has become a peculiar landmark among the lake's natural features. While the true reasons for its placement may never be known, the statue remains a topic of discussion for those exploring the depths of the lake. Cottage Carousel Jan grinned as the icy wind nipped at his cheeks. Another record was in his sights. With his chainsaw wielding crew from beyond the press at his side, they had embarked on their most daring project yet, carving the largest ice carousel the world has ever seen. Over several days, they battled numb fingers and fatigue to stake out their creation. A painstaking 1,000-foot circle began to take shape across the frozen landscape, but Jan knew their toughest challenge was still to come, cutting through slabs of ice several feet thick. The whine of chainsaws filled the air as the team set to work, but conventional tools were useless against ice of this scale. Innovation was needed. In a flash of genius, Jan modified a stump grinder, outfitting its maw with a celestial saw blade. With their new beast of a machine, chunks of ice began flying. Still, days of grinding labor passed. Shoulders sagged under the physical strain as the sunless sky began to darken each evening. Doubts crept in. Could their mad dream possibly be realized? On the fifth frigid night, Jan called for one final push. Through a swirl of icy particulates, they saw it. A gap remained in only one spot. With a triumphant roar, the circle fell free. Exhausted but exultant, the crew tugged with all their might. Slowly, stubbornly, and possibly, the massive ring began to turn. Jan watched in awe, the doubt melting from his bones as another record was born. Against all odds, their insane vision had been achieved. Underwater Crucifix for decades, a mysterious crucifix lay at the bottom of Lake Michigan. No one knew its story. Only rumors circulated among local divers. Dennis Jessick was determined to learn the truth. As a sheriff's sergeant who frequently recovered drowning victims, the crucifix held deep significance. In 1986, Denny organized the first public viewing of the illuminated crucifix through an ice-bound hole on the frozen lake. Hundreds braved the frigid conditions, drawn by the crucifix's allure but its origins eluded Denny. Whenever weather allowed, he continued the winter tradition, all the while pursuing leads on its history. 
None proved satisfactory until Denny uncovered a new clue years later. A teenager named Gerald had died in a tragic farming accident in 1956. Determined to honor their son, Gerald's grieving parents commissioned an ornate crucifix from Italy as a memorial. Denny's hunt led him to a farm where he met Gerald's brother Bob. At last, Denny understood the crucifix's deeply personal purpose, but the family story had been lost to time. Across decades, storms destroyed two replicas erected at Gerald's gravesite, yet the underwater crucifix endured. Each public viewing let Danny share Gerald's story and keep history alive. Thanks to one diver's dogged investigation of a cold case decades old, a crucifix under the lake still gives comfort by sharing a tragic tale of loss that refuses to sink into oblivion. Algae bloom found on Boston Pond It was a deceptively beautiful summer day when the truth about Boston's recreational ponds were revealed. For weeks, residents had enjoyed relaxing swims in the tranquil waters. Few could have guessed the hidden menace brewing just below the surface. When routine tests were conducted in schoolhouse and ministers' ponds, the results that came back were alarming. Lurking in the shallows was a massive, thick bloom of cyanobacteria, a algal strain known to endanger anyone who ingested its toxins. Young children were especially at risk as they splashed and played, oblivious to the danger nearby. The test results left no choice but to close both ponds, removing them from recreational use. Signs warned townsfolk of the hidden health hazard and waters they long enjoyed. Though heartbreaking, the decision was made to protect residents from the invisible threat. Additional testing through the state health department was launched to fully understand the scope of contamination. Officials prayed follow-up results would show the bloom receding on its own, but regulations required two clean bills of health before reopening could be considered. As summer edged towards a close, families kept their distance from the once idyllic swimming spots. Young and old alike could only wonder when, or if, the beloved ponds might safely welcome swimmers back into their embrace once more. The future of these local treasures, long part of the community's way of life, now lay shrouded in an ominous sea of algal green. Fifty Snakes Slithering Tanya was enjoying an afternoon bike ride. That is, until something caught her eye. As she rode past the pond with her friend, a strange motion in the water grabbed her attention. She froze at the bank, eyes widening in disbelief at the sight before her. Dozens of snakes swam together in an undulating mass beneath the surface. Tanya estimated at least 50 snakes engulfed in one another, more than she'd ever seen in one place. Her pulse quickened with apprehension. Were these venomous water moccasins threatening the shoreline? She had to know. Pulling out her phone, Tanya began filming the extraordinary spectacle. After several minutes of footage, she nervously tore herself away to continue down the trail. Back home, she posted the videos online, seeking answers from fellow nature lovers. Their guesses ranged from garter snakes to cottonmouths, equally unsettling possibilities. Tanya knew she needed a professional opinion. She showed the videos to a reporter at KSAT, who took immediate interest in the story. The station brought in herpetologist Brenda Posey to review the scenes of serpentine chaos. To Tanya's relief, Brenda identified the swimmers as baby water snakes, common but fierce when young. While non-venomous, the masked hatchlings defended themselves as a single unified body. As Brenda explained, this behavior was normal for juvenile water snakes to survive together against all threats. Tanya was grateful for the expert clarification, though the vision of that teeming brood remained etched in her memory like a scene from nature's wildest dreams. Swamp demons, hidden within the Louisiana swamplands, two artists were scheming their latest conceptual installation. For years, the French duo have crafted site-specific environmental artworks that explore humanity's connection with nature. Intrigued by the dense yet delicate ecosystem of the swamp, these two artists embarked on week-long trips to immerse themselves and gather materials. Wandering the mosaic of landscapes, they observed the networks of flora and interpendence of species that thrived in this humid world. Inspired by the gnarled branches and moss-covered textures around them, the artists envisioned a haunting menage of figures to populate the swamp. Back in their studio, Sophie and Regis worked tirelessly to construct the ominous forms. Using the very trees, vines, and plants that constituted the swamp, layer by layer the demons began to emerge. Towering yet contorted, the swamp demons displayed an unnatural humanoid anatomy fashioned entirely of the swamp's remnants. 
curled vines resembled grasping fingers and twisted branches formed misshapen silhouettes. Draped in Spanish moss and mud, the faces peered in all directions. When completed, they transported the organic demons back to the swamp that birthed their creation. Blending seamlessly into the misty environment, the sculptures served as a reminder of the symbiotic balance within the mysterious place. Their Swamp Demons installation lets visitors glimpse new perspectives of the hidden beauty. Fish with a human face. In the village of Miao in Kunming, China, an astonishing discovery was set to take stage. A visitor to the popular tourist destination spotted something unbelievable while observing the koi swimming in one of Miao's many scenic ponds. One particular fish caught the visitor's eye with its incredible and uncanny resemblance to a human face. The carp's white and orange markings align perfectly to emulate a mouth, nose, eyes, and even facial projections. The lucky witness managed to capture video footage of the rare find. Carp developing markings that resemble face is not entirely unheard of, but actually seeing one in person is incredibly uncommon. Similar discoveries have cropped up sporadically over the years in other parts of the world. Back in 2010, a man in the UK bought a regular carp and five months later, it transformed into a human fish before his eyes, complete with eyes, nose, and mouth. The extreme rarity of his fish was valued at around 40,000 euro. Just a year later in 2011, another human face carp was found swimming in a Taiwanese pond. While random markings on animals may evoke a illusion of a face, seeing a live carp bearing an unmistakably human visage remains a once-in-a-lifetime occurrence. The visitor will certainly have an incredible story to tell, an amazing video to show after crossing paths with this mystifying fish. For now, the human-faced carp remains happily swimming in the pond, leaving villagers and visitors to speculate why fish would develop such rare patterns. Woolly Mammoth Skeleton in the frigid wilderness of northern Siberia. Reindeer herders made an extraordinary discovery, the remarkably preserved skeleton of a young woolly mammoth. The ancient beast was unearthed from the mucky bottom of the lake in the Yamalo Nenets district, where scientists believe it had remained frozen in time for at least 10,000 years. Scientists from the Arctic Research Center have begun meticulously excavating the lake bottom, hopeful that more of the mammoth may emerge. If successful, Fully excavating the mammoth skeleton will be an arduous task requiring specialized equipment to extract it from the frozen ground, but the promise of new revelations about the extinct species make it well worth the effort. Studying the mammoth can offer precious insights into the lives of these shaggy giants who once roamed the steppes of Ice Age Siberia until vanishing around 10,000 years ago. While other mammoth fossils have been dated back 30,000 years, finds with such well-preserved soft tissues are exceptionally rare. As climate change sees the Siberian permafrost rapidly thaw, more stunning specimens like this may emerge. But the clock is ticking. Rising temperatures could destroy more remains before they can be recovered, even as the illegal ivory trade fuels dangerous bone-hunting expeditions. For now, scientists are racing to unlock the mammoth's secrets before it's too late. Car found in drained pond When the model boating pond on London's Hampstead Heath was drained for dam improvement work, a surprising piece of history emerged from the muddy bottom. A decades-old Fort Courtenay, the classic car, which was the best-selling auto in Britain during the 1970s, was pulled from the silt by contractors after the pond's water level receded. The car, covered in grime from years spent submerged, had likely rested at the bottom of the pond for over 50 years, harkening back to a time when the sleek vehicles first went on sale. In addition to the car, workers recovered a mysterious metallic eagle from the muck, it's unclear how the vintage vehicle and ornament came to occupy the pond bed before the City of London Corporation took over management of the sprawling Hampstead Heath Parkland in 1989. Both historic finds were reported to police. Mysterious Creature in Japanese Pond The creatures known as Kappa in a fixture of Japanese folklore, prowling the lakes, rivers and swamps of the countryside, though only the size of a small child, the Kappa strikes fear into the hearts of children who stray too close to the water's edge. With green, scaly skin and a turtle-like shell on its back, the kappa resembles a sinister variety of lizard or amphibian. Its webbed feet suited for swimming and sharp claws capable of pulling apart prey. The most curious feature of the kappa is the small plate or dish that sits atop its head, which must be filled with water for it to move out about on land. Carefree children playing near the water's edge soon learn to be wary, lest a kappa emerge from the depths and attempt to drain their life force. 
Alternatively, it may rip apart limbs or simply feast on human flesh. When not brutalizing hapless humans, the kappa enjoys summertime activities like swimming and wrestling. It has a particular fascination with the Japanese sport of sumo. The kappa's favorite food is cucumbers, which it can often be appeased with, but its mischievous nature means one must be careful around kappas even when they appear friendly. The only foolproof way to defeat a kappa is to trick it into bowing, causing the water to spill from the plate on its head and to render it unable to move. While their true origins may never be known, these sinister yet amusing creatures likely originated long ago as a way to frighten disobedient children away from dangerous water. Mm-hmm. <laughs>